Welcome guys, we got another guest and our main topic today will be challengers and many other things around mm -hmm. the esport and gaming because uh, Wolfie is the kind of guy who is like uh, working more and more into esport industry and this is what I also want to talk about with him. But first of all, usually I'm giving a warm up question for my viewers, uh, for my guests and for, and for the viewers. So how did you start with with Quake in general, like playing Quake, like how mm -hmm. did you get into the scene? Like what was the, the beginning? Oh, uh, that was like 20 years ago. And I was uh, I was playing with my brother when I was, when I was young, when I was 11. And uh, after a few months of playing with him, I started to beat him. He's like six years older. And I remember that I asked my uh, my dad to drive me to Katowice to first land, yeah. one of the first land events uh, when I played and I met there like Orto, Dave, Matrox, things like this old, like so it was like 2002 or something, right? Something like that, yeah, yeah, like like yeah. almost like 20 years ago. So yeah, 2000, 2002, 2003, and I just loved competing in duels, and I mostly played duels all like all my life, almost like Quake Free, Quake Life. Obviously, I did take part, did take did take breaks from from it, but like Quake is the game that you always come back. Like, you, you you cannot stop. So I just after like Quake Life launched, I I continued to play. I only skipped Quake Four. That's the only game that I missed, but like All right. a lot of years of playing. Did you get to Quake Champions like very early? Because the beta was like the, the very beginning of start and the keys they were giving out was 2000, late 2016, early 2017, I think. I did start like at the very, very beginning. Like the, I had the key to, to just check the game out. And I hated the run duels. I played eight hours. I gave right. them feedback on forums together with like some other place like Sparty. I remember he was like he had like post above me, and I and I typed that that this is not the way it's supposed to be. And I asked them mm -hmm. to give a time limit duel where everyone can choose one champion and just play standard duel, which they mm -hmm. after he did. So yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really like it. And I jumped into the Quake Champions in 2021, like one and a half year ago. And I planned on only two months to to visit my very first competitive tournament, which is like a crazy story. But uh, going to Quake Champions is like probably my best decision ever, ironically, mm -hmm. even though I hated it. And I played Quake Life for for, for to like till like 2020. Before I forget, um, I think the Quake Champions was so inno innovating. It was kind. Of, I think they were inspired a bit with uh, new games like um, FPS MOBAs, like uh, combos, like Overwatch just came mm -hmm. out like like a year before Quake Champions, basically. So I think that had huge impact on Quake Champions. And yes. I think a lot of players, like a lot of Quake players, usually are like old school. It's same with CS. Like I don't imagine now CS making new game. And implementing so many like different like uh, features, like for example abilities and stuff like that, people would go completely crazy. And I think that kind of happened to the certain degree in Quake as well. So there was like a lot of people who stayed with Quake Live because they hate the fact that they need to play uh, like uh, round jewels first of mm -hmm. all. Second of all, there was a lot of champions like uh, different abilities, like uh, uh, and and etc. Like. Did you like the fact of like different champions abilities and you hated the round jewel only or you hated everything in the beginning and get used to it eventually? Uh, I hated the mostly the round time duel. I just didn't really get it. I, I think like the essence of Quake lost their essence of duel was lost yeah. in, in this in this idea. But I like the difference in movements and different uh, different abilities. And I never had those. And even because that was the time when Quake Champions was was being released. That was the time that, that I was streaming Quake Life quite a lot. I was I had like you know some I don't know 30, 40 viewers. That was like pretty okay. And I, I remember I was giving their comments that because uh, I was like playing a, a lot of these uh, top level Quake Life players, like I was playing with Evil, I was playing like with Sparty, even we were even practice partners before Quake in 2016, mm -hmm. and I was like always around, and I was like, come on, like imagine the scale bearer is like he fits so much this Evil style, this aggressive like precision, like, it's gonna be so cool when he's gonna be like mastering this champion, we're gonna see him. And then they just, they did this just weird random duel and there the stacks and the armor control was completely different idea. I didn't, I didn't, I just didn't like it. That, was, that wasn't dueling for me. So I just, I didn't like a lot of things, but they changed it with time. And I think yeah. like in this, in this way, Quake Champions is, is, I really like the, if it would be this, 
this way from the beginning, I think the game would, would go much better like in, in like number sizes and stuff like that. It might because it will get to the to the bigger masses of people maybe because hmm. a lot of people I think tried it in the beginning and then they quit it straight away because and I think it, this is the mentality of people nowadays like if you don't like something straight away, you're most likely gonna quit and never come back. This is the chance where you gonna miss something or achieve some like great like uh, results. Anyway, speaking of evil, um, hmm? you liked his playstyle, right? I can I can tell like by how you speak about the evil and uh, um, not really. I mean, I, it's I, pretty I, obvious. I also liked his playstyle. It's like it's very unique. It's super unique. It's the, I the actually, guy like I actually was loved, incredible. I actually loved Rafa style. It's more. I I really prefer this one, but I really adored what evil was doing, and I, I could also feel on myself evil powers. So that was a really cool experience. We when can I... straight away say like how the games were different between Q QL and uh, Quick Champions because mm -hmm. look where Rafa is now and where Evil is now, right? They both start at the same time yeah. and it's kind of interesting story. It's like another topic. Basically, we can speak for hours about Sh Evil, but yeah. he kind of started Quick Champions and then uh, then something completely went wrong. He felt like he's getting DDoSed and you probably heard all those yeah, stories. Yeah, like, yeah. He felt like something wrong with his PC that he's getting DDoSed, that there is some like big like you know, um, new world order happening around him or something like that, and he kind of mm -hmm. quit at some point. I think he just lacked like a bit of like, you know, experience from Overwatch maybe because a lot of like quick champions players before played Overwatch. Yeah, yeah. Like, Rafa, the Hunk, like Cypher, Cooler, like everyone basically played it, and he didn't have experience with that. He stick to quick life. Yeah. Anyway, so just to stick to like a little bit at least uh, to any chronologic. Um, mm -hmm. So we played Quick Champions, and then what was your first? Did you ever go to any bigger events in Quake Life? Like DreamHack were happening, like QuakeCon. Didn't you plan to go to this QuakeCon 2016, maybe, when you were active? I won like it, but I always was close to get there, but I couldn't never do it. And that was also the time when I was like, uh, I, I never got sponsored. I was always this just random mm -hmm. Polish high-level guy dueling online and, and being able to beat some pro players in uh, some random online tournaments, but I was never able to get to the like official tournament, which was like my biggest dream. I was participating mm -hmm. in online and just, uh, and just streaming. Um, right. Yeah, that was, that was painful. I, I wish I was able to, but you know, that, that's how lives go. But uh, yeah, but I but I had there was some I had like best time was around 2016, so like almost on the edge of Quake Life, where yeah. I was uh, where I was uh, participating in every 125 FPS tournament every Sunday with uh, Zoot casting. I also joined the casting crew because uh, Zoot invited me once for casting, and people liked me so much, surprisingly that he that he told me like, hey dude, if you wanna like cast. And you're free, just you know, jump every Sunday. We can. And cast you kept casting from time to time. That that's my another question, which I'm gonna ask you about mm -hmm. casting later on. Yeah, yeah. So, um, basic basically, you skipped like uh, Quick Life 2016 QuakeCon, then you uh, went to the Quick Champions, and then they announced this one million dollar tournament in 2017 on QuakeCon. You definitely had to try that, right? So, did you try to go for qualifiers? I think that was. That was a very hard time back then, and a lot of people were trying to go for qualifiers back then, because like you know, like one million dollar tournament was huge back then. No, no, I, I, no? I was, I was, I was this upset Quake Life player, being like, With you know, juice, nah, yeah. I'm not gonna yeah. touch it. It's not, it's not for me. It's not Quake. Blah blah blah. I was just, I was in bad mood, and I was just playing other games because I play like a lot of games on like really high level, and I like to uh, test myself. I could never right. go pro, but I, you know, I, I just spent some time probably back then on StarCraft to, I played some tournaments on Counter-Strike. I don't remember where I was back then. All but, right. Yeah. Let's, let's skip this uh, traumatic uh, time <laughs> of round jewels. Let's move forward to 2019. I think late 2019, early 2019, they announced time limit jewels with huge patch with quick pro league happening. So that was the point where you said to yourself, yeah, that's the time I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna start playing. Uh, no, I, I missed that information. Oh, yeah. I was still playing right. Quake Life. I was still uh, right. streaming. And then uh, some weird story happened because in 2021 in, 
In August, I was uh, streaming Quake Live, and one of my viewers, uh, Ice Cold Water, said like, "Hey, dude, you sh you, yeah, Quake Live is almost that you're like, like dueling Cyber every day because you're yeah, like literally the only two yeah. high-level players, yeah. so you're just having yeah. fun." Uh, there's a Quake Champions. There's a Polish community. There are a lot of legends. Just play it. It's good. Mm -hmm. And he forced me to play it. I really liked it. And I, in September 2021, I started a stream challenge that I'm gonna hit elite level, not knowing the game because I literally didn't touch it since beta. I'm gonna learn the maps. I'm gonna learn the champions. I'm gonna hit elite in two months. And I and That's I huge. and I did it in two months. I learned. I was playing like literally only Doom every map, so I can just you know learn the maps and the flow of the game rather than yeah. now wasting time on learning stroke yeah. on the crowd sliding yeah. movement that I don't even know because I didn't play quick. And what what is the most weird and story that that is literally bizarre and I don't even can't understand that is that after these two months there was like uh, October November I just barely hit elite I. Played few games with Zenaku on the ranked, uh, you know, matchmaking. I started to experience this high level quake and what is the difference. And then they announced the Iron Fist qualifiers when I when I just fought and I even said it on stream, I'm gonna just sign up, I'm gonna just play for fun. I wanna see I wanna feel this first competitive level yeah. of play. Let's see, I don't even know have even all the champions unlocked, but let's go. Yeah. And I think, and you had to go, and you had to go for qualifiers, of course, because it was invited tournament, and there was like four spots, uh, three spots, for three spots, three spots, yeah. So that was hard as well. That was hard so as well. So you had to go for the qualifiers. So that's even that, that's even bigger story. Yeah, and so I, we decided to go for it. And I, uh, but that was just let's get experience. That was, I, I didn't yeah. even think I'm gonna qualify, and I actually didn't. I did beat a lot of random. I was surprised that I beat actually Aaron V two zero. Which he would, I, I remember he was like super mad because he knew I was just playing literally two months, and I got yeah. to the loser bracket finals and I lost to Sib. Uh, two to one. I even get, take away a map from you, which I was uh, like super happy about it. I remember Vengo and Vengo and Razy was casting it, but I didn't get it. I was I was uh, I, I think there was uh, I, I think top two was getting in, but I was third or something like that. But I wasn't. Right. I was very close. And then uh, uh, Cipher, I think Cipher or Hron, I'm not sure, uh, didn't get their visa. Like Cipher has Hron didn't. Hron. And yeah. Maestro guys just uh, typed to me like, hey, there, there's a slot. Your next guy like you know, mm -hmm. come up and I had to, I was like, so, you know, happy and surprised. Like, I think that was a lot of about mental because I didn't yeah. went there to win. I actually went there to just play the game. And I think like, it, I, I was get so experience free. experience and stuff like this. That That's crazy story. So yeah. How, how, um, how early before the event you found out that you're gonna like, um, play instead of run? Like it was like a few weeks, right? Or something like yeah. that, I think. Uh, yeah, I was like, uh, let's, let's practice. Cause I don't know much about this game yet. And yeah, I was just so playing, uh, you found much. out that you're gonna play instead of Kron. They invite you, you, you get his spot, right? Yeah, obviously. By the way, you book tickets, like you, you get some yes. like hotel, and like were you sponsored back then, or you no, were trying no, to get no, a sponsor no, no. at that time? No, I sponsored so everything you went... myself. All right, so you went there kind of on your own. That's yes. also very difficult in the beginning because mm -hmm. you didn't really know the scene yet, right? You didn't yes. know people, you didn't get any connections, and can you go through this process? Because it's like super interesting for me. So you sit down and you said, okay, man, I need to practice first of all. Second of all, I need to find a hotel. Third of all, I need to book flights and, and I need to figure things out. How did it go like step by step? Uh, I had to do it in two weeks because it was literally two weeks before the event. And I actually had a, I, I actually have uncle living in London. So I was very lucky because right. he just gave me a room to sleep. So I had to only book uh, some flights, which I had to borrow money which my uh, parents just helped me out there because I was like in a very weird situation when I was changing jobs, you know, that was like yeah. very messy time. But I I did it, everything, like everything just went as it's supposed to be. So that was very close and it, it took me a lot of time, but I was that was like one of my best experience, if not the best experience in my competitive play because that was actually my very first big event where I could... Uh, Finally meet all of you guys, because I, I know you, I watched all of you, like Rafa, you obviously, and I started to know Razy and Vengur from Quake Champions, because in Quake 3, Quake Life, they didn't really were known. Um, so that was like really cool to, to experience that. Also, back then, uh, Zenaku was living in Poland. Did you try to contact him and go maybe together with him? Because yeah. he was flying from the same city as me, but I, I just... I didn't go with him. I, I just went alone. Like I had to do some things in London before. I think 
I don't you remember ha- you exactly. Had boot camp. But that, you had bootcamp with Maxter and Nospa, if I remember that's correctly. As well, that's as well, yeah. But, but yeah, I think I just went separately from him. I was going back with him, basically, like with the same flight. So did you try to contact him maybe and go with him or like... Yeah, yeah, I, m- I met Zanaku uh, via streaming because he was streaming sometimes and me, I was gathering some nice uh, community back then when I was streaming literally every day for a few hours practicing Quake Champions and uh, I, he was going by himself, I was going from Katowice so we were, and he was from Wrocław so we were going from different places but I met him in London like two days before the Iron Fist uh, tournament and I actually uh, even scheduled for us some... Uh, computer placement place right. in London. To so you had, a little, you had a little bootcamp before. <clears throat> yeah, with Zanaku. And that was All the right. first time I met him and he was like a cool dude. We were talking a lot. And that was the first time I was like meeting this a whole new level of players. And that was really cool. Did the small bootcamp like literally two days, like you were more focused on having fun and enjoying yourself in London or you, or you kind of tried to improve as much as you can and try uh, to get something out of Zenaku? Try to improve, talk a lot uh, with Zenaku about mental approach and uh, I knew I'm going to play Vengur and he was back then the champion. So I, I knew I have like a very hard j- job uh, in front of me and I was like more yeah. focused on just uh, doing my best, not focusing really on winning. Because after two months, it's it's really hard to really think that I'm gonna win. But I I'm try I was trying to build this mental that I'm gonna yeah. just do my best. I'm gonna be aggressive. Don't yeah. respect him. Don't be afraid. And that was actually what I was doing on our first map, and it actually went really pretty well. I lost 11-7, but I think after two months of playing against this kind of level, I even 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 Vanguard told me that he was really surprised by my just aggressiveness and like not really caring about him. And it actually worked. Not on second map, but. Happy. I remember this event and it was super cool because the <coughs> atmosphere was great. It was like in the Red Bull sphere and, and the studio was quite small, like everybody had the chance to hang around and it was kind of different atmosphere than it is on big events. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed it. And how was your experience like on the play days? So you came there, you, you warm up. You had so many players to warm up with, right? How yeah, did you yeah. choose it? Like, did you want to play with Rafa, for example? Because this is super exciting in the beginning when you when you are, you know, starting and and, and stuff like this. You you want to try to practice with some people. So, how did it go? How did the event go? How did you like the games and like in general the atmosphere like of this Iron Fist? Like, with who did you hang out the most? Who did you like the most? You you know, it's like a lot of yeah just, yeah. Oh. Also, like there is like when you go to the LAN event, you've got groups of people, you know, like yes. some people hang out with other. It's mm-hmm. like it's normal. You got friends. It's it's like how did you experience that? Uh, so I was, I was uh, first of all, I was mostly since I met Zanaku two days before. So I was mostly hanging out with Zanaku and then with uh, Kelly. That was actually mm-hmm. there, his uh, actual girlfriend. And yeah. uh, after first uh, after first day, we were like, "Hey, let's go like downtown. Let's let's get something to eat. Let's drink one yeah. beer. Talk about first day and Quake." And uh, Sib was like uh, this alone guy just walking around. And we we're like, "Hey, Sib, you wanna just join us? Like, you know, let, let's yeah. go." And he joined us. So we were like these four four people just having fun, talking Quake and talking uh, pig buns for the next matches and stuff like that. Um, about the event, uh, that was my first experience ever, so I was very excited. That was pretty well handled, I think. I think that could have been done more uh, that I would like to see in competitive level of Quake, which I mean by that is that why there's nobody with, uh, for example, camera and microphone just walking around with players. We were like chilling at the couch, so just jump to us in between the matches and just talk to us, like be this more uh, casual and just representing us players to the camera and stream more. Then it just, I, I felt like it was kind of uh, stiff, like no, every, everything had to be calculated by the hour. Like, I, 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 they I, wanted I, to do it professionally, but yes. I also had a great idea. I, I just gonna throw my five cents. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also had a great idea. What would be super cool if they set up like, let's say four cameras, like in the corners oh. and have a separated stream where people could only watch like what's going on, like in the yeah. studio, you know, like here is somebody walking even without microphone or anything like that, but just like seeing everything yeah. because you know what they get to see is like, the, like the board behind the caster <clears throat> and the player when they are interviewing and the games but they don't see anything. They could see like a bar and like sit Rafa sitting there eating like a lunch or speaking. Drinking Red Bull. That would be also cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drinking yeah. Red Bull or anything. That, that, yeah, would cool. that would be a cool idea. That's, that's, also, that's also something. But, you know, I gave my first interview and, you know, that was, that was really cool. And uh, 
Uh, I had my PC that I that they signed me on. I, I really enjoyed playing on it. I was just uh, catching every player that was available. I didn't play with Rafa, but I remember I played with you when I was before the Wenger match. Yeah. I played with uh, Maxter, I, and I even won. I even was able to win some matches. I, I remember with effortless and Sip, I was doing the best. I felt like I was. Mm -hmm. I was being able to catch some uh, maps away from them, but mostly, obviously, I was losing these matches, but uh, not entirely that badly. You know, I, I was like this very uh, underdog in this tournament, and I, I knew it. That's still great. That's still and great. Did it? Did did this even boost your motivation more? Like you were like after the event, okay, now I want to go to another event. I want to qualify to QPL. I want to yes. compete. It did boost you. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, unfortunately, I there. unfortunately, there was not so many more tournaments, which were not like QPL. So it was. This is kind of this is kind of shame, and I wish there was more. Like last year, there was like you know this Quachicon in Australia. Yes. There was like um, the Spanish one. Mm -hmm. Iron Fist King was Con, but supposed I... to be there. Yeah, King Kong. King Kong. So I, I wish there was more like this. So people who are not participating in QPL could have like, you know, this motivation and a goal to play. Because if you don't have a goal, it's kind of hard to keep playing. Yes, yes. And uh, there's only one goal for now, which is just get to the QPL. But when it, when you're not, when you're not able to do it, then what? Like you have to wait for a whole year. That kind of, that's not, that's not really great. That's but... unmotivating. Yeah. Yeah, but Iron so Fist two maybe like there was like some they announced Iron Fist two, but it was delayed, and now we don't even yeah. know what's gonna happen. But yeah, the more tournaments, you're right about that. That would be cool. Yeah, I think there should be like more, and I think there will be Iron Fist at some point. Uh, but anyway, so you came back from Iron Fist, and uh, what were your main goal back then? You tried to qualify. How did you, did did you try to go more into casting, <clears throat> or like how did because uh, obviously you get in, more into Polish community, right? How did that Polish was the community. first step. Yeah. I How went... did the Polish community basically react on you being on Iron Fist as a Polish guy and, you know, they were um, basically cheering for you. So that, uh, that must have been great, right? Yes. I, I went I went back and I uh, knew that there's a Polish Quake League happening. And I the, the, my right. first goal between uh, challengers and everything was I want to I wanna compete in this Polish Quake League. I want to be the best. And I know, and I knew that FaZe is dominating the Polish scene, so like, that's my rival number one, let's go. And I remember even FaZe streaming and I was like typing to him on, on chat like, yeah, what up bro? And he was like, oh, the Polish old legend, what up Wolf? And I was like, what? I'm, I'm a legend? Like, come on, I didn't even achieve anything. But yeah, I was like pretty decent back then. That, that was pretty nice. And the Polish community was very, very nice to me. And I was offered to cast to join the, the, the crew because I'm like very, very easy outgoing, very loud. And uh, I, I started to give this insight. I was, try, I, I was starting to learn more Quake and getting to know, getting to know after the season start started last year, I, I participated. I, I luckily won the group stage and I met FaZe in the grand finals for the Polish so championship. You, so you basically, so you basically both played and cast. Yes. Yes. Okay. Before we continue with, we will get back to the, to uh -huh. the playing like a part. Do you prefer like, or no, let's, let's stick to that. <laughs> uh, so you basically tried to cast and play. And that was the first. That was the first season of this Polish league, or yeah. that was and the second, second one. Of... Second one. Second one, because that was right after Iron Fist. Yeah, that was Iron like Fist the was beginning. in October. Or yeah, November, that was like January like starting something like that. Yeah, fresh ah, year. So you basically started the whole new season, and you went all the way to the finals. Yes. Yes. All I... right. And the finals took place uh, in which they were online or. In Wuch, no, we had event around offline. one around were 100 offline, right. people came up from whole Poland. Amazing event. So, so that's another cool story because, you know, because there is little mm -hmm. leagues like outside QPL and it's, it, it's super cool to watch because I know there is like German, German league going yes, on yes, and yes. there is like this Polish league going on. There is like other little leagues, which is super interesting. I also want to ask about it because I think it's, mm -hmm. it's a great. So that's super nice that you managed to make a LAN like proper LAN, mm -hmm. like did you try to get like legit LAN servers from uh, ID no, Software no. or did you set it up on internet? How was it? How was the tournament? How do you compare it to Iron Fist 2? Was it like same atmosphere? Like, okay, that's a lot of questions. Where, where, did, where did it took place? Like exactly, you know, uh, was, uh... there's a base stack camp. This is a base stack. That's how the, na the, the place called. They have over 100 right. PCs and we had uh, everything on 240 Hertz with very good PCs that were stable in FPS. So the pieces were That's very right. solid, uh, professional seats, really cool place that we started to cooperate with. 
they gave us whole place for all of us in basement. There was a area for viewers, so we had a um, I don't know how it's in English, but we uh, use the projector to the wall so people yeah, can watch. Yeah. We had the ca casters separately. Uh, we, the cast was in Polish and English because we had like F Medic joining us. We had Havrix. There was All like right. a lot of people came up to the event, and and in Polish Quake League, there's uh, divisions. So you have gold, silver. You can play wherever, yeah. like, which is cool because everyone can feel this competitiveness on their yeah. certain level because if i would play against silver that's well, like what's the point so they can exactly. challenge it brings more players that, that's a good idea yes yeah, right we have even amateur league there's a uh, six players that's not much but this is literally for people who never played like you don't look quick champions go to the amateur we're gonna cast your games it's gonna be fun it good. works yeah. six people not much but it's something and the whole event went really well we had uh, last season we had uh, over 80 people signed in participating so, so that's really that's cool nice. number for only polish league so that's so there's a polish community that is enjoying themselves and uh and yeah there, there was pri there were prizes everything we are just doing by ourselves the league is free you can just sign up for free and play so you don't have to pay anything you just you know just show up on your time and and play the matches so you basically show up on the finals and you were participating. Did you had a chance to like cast a little bit, or you no. fully focused on playing? Fully no, on playing? Uh, the top six players from group stage on elite uh, division were playing uh, the playoffs. So there was Sting, mm -hmm. Matrox came up as a as a support. There was like a, a lot of a lot of really good Polish players, and and me and Face and Zviros, which were like um, everyone knew it's gonna be probably top three and it was and me and face were fighting both finals for the so you went to the grand the final with face yes 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 and you played with face and how, how did that match did it go how do you remember i really this? like competing with face because he's a very good friend of mine but uh we hate playing against each other because there's this rivalry for this best polish player you're not like counted like because <laughs> you're like you know on the on the world level but we are like this polish other guys who try to to compete for this title and we are like very very uh, close level because in the winner bracket finals uh, i lost three to two in maps and in the grand finals we had overtimes but he managed to win it three zero but but we are like our matches are really cool i like I like them because completely different styles and and there's there's emotions especially in face if you that's get super good that's yeah. super good that is close and you guys managed to like fight for like being the best polish player is mm -hmm. also like uh, you you got some some goal and stuff like this so yes. it's super good so now it's another season going on yes and we changed the name for tilt quake champions league uh, from Polish and we are open to Europeans and some Europeans join in. We have RMV in elite division. That's going to be like right. probably my hardest opponent. FaZe is not signed up. So there's probably uh, RMV is going to be like this, uh, the hardest level. We have some, we have Rome and there's a few uh, so really you good... Basically need to, you basically need to win it this time. Yes, yes what, that's the goal. What if, what if RMV is going to be the best Polish player? It's not Polish anymore. So it's like, ah, right. it's yeah. like European. It's so, it's, so it's European. It's European, so it's not anymore Polish because that wouldn't make any sense. But you have to uh, show up on the land because we're going to have land again. And we, same, same place? Uh, probably, or Warsaw. But we have a date and it's, and it's not going to change. And there's gonna be everyone. What's gonna the date up. for the people who's watching? Maybe maybe they will join the stream or want to come. Oh my god, I'm not, I'm not prepared, bro. It, it's it's in. Uh, we'll in our we'll put it in the description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right I, I have to, when, I have to double check. I have to video. double check. I, I don't I don't want to mess it up. But but uh, before holiday. So no it's just will be super yeah. good for people to know. So they they keep an eye on it and follow and follow your Twitch and, and watch the games. Yeah, whole thing's so gonna be great. streamed. We ha we are now uh, casting in English, so Havrik's joining obviously, and we have and we as Polish guys also cast. I I I am gonna cast actually tomorrow the next matches. There's right. gonna be platinum, diamond. You know everything is happening right. every week is another uh, queue of matches, and we are going eight weeks of matches. Then the top six of every division go to the finals, and we're gonna have this gathering. But you have to come to the land. So hopefully Aaron V he right. said he's gonna fly to Poland, which is gonna be cool. And we have Rome, we have there's a lot of people from Europe right now also participating, which is really, really cool. That's great. So speaking about uh, that league, are you guys trying to actively speak with sponsors to get some prizes or you got yes. some donation goal maybe, or you get like GoFoundMe or like site or anything like that where people can <clears throat> donate or uh, how we do have, you do that? Uh, uh, 
Polish division of Bethesda is helping us with with prizes. So we have some Quake gear to give a, to give away. We, we, right. we can get some. We can arrange some money. So there, you know, there are some prizes, and you know, league obviously is for free, so you can just join it, join in. And from our side is to do as much as we can to to give any prizes to those people and, and even who's money. The main, who is the main guy for Polish Bethesda now? Isn't it Lecho? Lecho, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Is? It's Lecho. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Good luck with prizes then. I hope you can gather something cool so people get something in reward and, yeah. and things like this. And it's super great. Uh, and as I said, I, I wanted to, to ask before, like, so you get like experience to play and, and you got to experience some casting. Like, mm -hmm. do, which one do you prefer? Obviously playing, but uh, I really do like casting also. And that was really fun back in Quake Life when I was casting with Zoot. Uh, because I was like casting with him the match, then I was like, hey Zoot, hey, Zoot I, I have a game in like two minutes, so I'm gonna jump into the game, I'm gonna come back to you after the set, and we're like literally doing this on live, so I was just jumping back and then and playing, and I was, I was enjoying both, but uh, I don't know, playing gives me a lot of, a lot of joy, like I, I'm a really competitive player, I really like to just win and, and do my best, but, uh, but casting is also really nice, but first player, then the caster. All right. So, uh, okay, one more question. I just came out with it. So sure. uh, you are really a lot into Polish community. Like uh, there's like a lot of communities in Quake. Which one is the biggest or, or, or like, what do you think? Do you think like Polish community is quite big? Like a lot of people are interested in Quake or it's like, uh, we know CIS community is quite huge, right? Mm -hmm. Like one of the biggest, I think. But how do you compare it with Polish community? I, I'm not sure how big are the different communities, but our our community is very solid because we have have these guys who are like over 30 years old, like a whole shoot to kill clan is like legends almost of the Quake community, of the clan arena. It's amazing, right? Because you like said like 80, 80 people participating and yeah. judging that, that Poland isn't a huge country, <clears throat> it's like, it's like, it's like... I think it's it's a huge community for such a country. I think Quake in general it was very big in Poland back in the days. Like I, 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 we are the we are one of those uh, countries that really went deep into the Counter Strike and Quake because basically that's how it looked in uh, big in early two thousand years. Like you went to the cafe, you choose Counter Strike or Quake, and you play one of True. these, and that's that's how it was. So I was one of those guys. I started to play Quake and I love it. I'm going to play it. But like, if you, if you even ask the, our legends from Counter-Strike, like Neo or others, they were also like, they went from the cafe, they played Counter-Strike and they enjoyed it. And bam, here we go. We have uh, some legend right now, pro player who have like big history. I think you had the same. You also probably went to the cafe, chose Quake and there you are. So exactly. That, yeah. That's how it was in Poland in the beginning. Like we had those two FPS games that were completely different, but you know people were playing what they like, and and we are very strong to our beliefs. People liked Quake, and till this day, there's nothing like Quake for me and for yeah. others. We're gonna we can give up the game, we can hate it, we're gonna un uninstall it, but it's gonna one two week we one two weeks gonna pass, and go guess what? You're gonna install it again because nothing gives yeah. such emotions as Quake, even if you play on. Crazy how huge is the community, same for CS and also even more crazy is how, how, how many like world champions, for example, in, in uh, CS we produced basically as, as such a small country. Yeah. Yeah. And, back and... in the days, yeah, back in the days, like guys were winning like world championships, like ESWC, like WSVGs and, and yeah, CPA. yeah, yeah. And the WCG as well, they won. Like yeah, but in Quake, huge. in numbers, we had also a pretty nice percentage, like you, Matrox and Stick showing up on, on some great events at, and early Quake 3 uh, events. There, it's lots of like three Polish guys competing on the high level. That was a pretty good number. But, you know, obviously it, right now it's mostly you. But, but yeah, we are, we are holding on and, and I really like the, this. Uh, this, well, this not even anymore, me, because like I'm not getting any good results any anymore. Anyway, I I used to have good results in Quake back in the days as well. But right. yeah, another thing. Uh, uh, so, okay, so let's stick to esports still. Like you also like um, going you you're going huge with your YouTube channel right now, and yes, and you're. Your content is kind of like a news, also podcasts, and, and, and you're kind of focusing on Polish scene as well, like a lot, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to speak more about it, like what do you do exactly with, with your YouTube? How is it going and what are your goals? And, and... 
it's d- it's now? doing pretty well. We are there's like a bunch of people working on it. I'm the face of it, and also that's why the Tilt Quake League also is called Tilt and uh, Discord because everything is like uh, we are we are trying to build this organization that's that's focused on gaming and esports. So we have this uh, little branch of just uh, ho- making a tournament league. But on the channel, I'm focusing on just. Esport and gaming and getting knowing uh, and get to know people that are famous from other games. I'm just, for example, doing interview with a very famous player from Heroes Free, like this random g- right. game which is very popular in Poland. And why is that? And the game is like very popular. It's more popular than Quake, which is like really weird because it's Heroes Free. But that's so, so yeah. funny that I want to just show to people the beautiness of gaming and esports. And also we are doing news. Uh, which 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 are which are happening almost daily? Like there's so much happening right now in gaming and esports because it's such a big world right now that I'm trying to keep keep up with that and give news to people and also give my perspective of it because I have some um, heavy uh, heavy thoughts about some things. Like for example, Diablo 4 right now came up and yeah. uh, I'm very experienced action RPG, RPG players. So I have a lot of, uh, to talk about it, for example. And, and as a, as a player who is like, who played a lot of games on a really high level, I can, I can really honestly talk about it. And I'm trying to build some persona that he actually knows what he's talking about because it's not easy. There's not many people that actually play so many games. And I'm just a guy who, freaking play games for almost whole yeah. this year and trying to do it competitively but i only did it in quake which i love the most all right okay so you are into casting into playing you're having your youtube esport channel and what else are you planning to do and what are you doing like is this like your main main uh, job at the moment yes. and you're focusing on the esport only in your life at the moment and you want to develop in that direction Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm doing full-time job right now on Tilt as a, as a content creator, as a guy who montage everything. Not everything, but I'm, I'm doing also the, the montage. Editing. And editing stuff, yeah. and stuff like that. And also in between that, I'm trying to get to the QPL, playing challengers and practicing Quake, participating in, in the league, uh, doing my private life because I have Easy a girlfriend. Guy. Like I'm doing a lot of things, and and also I have a like little company doing bartender work at weddings. So there's like additional thing. A lot of is happening, but I'm trying to manage everything. So that's cool. But doing my life. Okay, let's get back to your like player career. Mm-hmm. And now we now we are going with um, another challengers and for Europeans. So for you, I think there is like two or three events left where free. you can qualify. Am, free. am I right? Yeah. Yeah, free. So you got three more chances to qualify. What are the chances that you're going to qualify? How are you preparing for that? Uh, yeah, and how are you preparing for that? Based on my... Re- um, I think I can do it. It's all mostly about mental right now. I think I'm on this level where mental is like the most important for uh, mostly. And if I'm going to have... It's very hard because challenges are very hard to get in because you have to play a lot of these different really top high level players. You sometimes are forced to play on high ping because you're probably, right. for, for example, playing with Yup, And uh, you have to play on, the, which is hard to practice. You just have to adapt. And it's a completely different game when you play on 20 ping mm-hmm. against Europeans. So that, uh, it, it's ha- it have to be like six hours of straight playing very good Quake all the time. You can't, since we have not lose a bracket, which I don't yeah. really like, and I could talk with you about how it's how it's so bad uh, without loser brackets, but we don't have loser brackets. You have to play perfect. We, basically, you have to play like eight eight best of threes perfectly against high high level of quake all the time. Very hard to get in, but I'm trying. Recently, I have a very good, re, uh, really good uh, scores against a lot of plays that I'm practicing with. So I I I I'm I'm doing really well. Like mentally, I'm I'm like in good shape. I feel like I'm playing really good Quake. I wish I, I can do that on 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 this uh, Saturday that's coming up. Hopefully, that's great, man. Just for the records, because sometimes I forget to record videos and then I need to go over them. Are we still recording? I hope. Yes. Yes. Because the the conversation is super interesting and it's already going for some time, so it yes. would be a shame to lose this to lose oh, no. this material. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. All right. So, uh, and how how much daily you you trying to practice? Like for for example, now 
now we are on Monday and and on on Saturday is the challengers like what your plan what is your plan for this week I guess mostly you are focusing on Quake at the moment, right? Like those next five days, six I, days. Are you trying to practice with the pros, like QPL pros? <laughs> are you trying to practice with other uh, like challengers or like how does it look like? Uh, I'm trying to play around two to max three hours a day. Um, still, I need to focus on my work anyway. So this week I'm also working and doing other stuff. But I'm uh, every night I'm trying to get these high level players and play. Or from Polish community, but also I'm uh, I'm sometimes practicing with Zenaku, for example, and I'm try I'm gonna try to get uh, Vengur this week also to play. So I'm I have the I have contacts with QPL players. I'm trying to to play All with right. them because they're gonna prepare me the best because they're gonna show me like the highest level, and then uh, at the at at challengers uh, I should be prepared. All right, so let's see. Like, who is the biggest threat at the moment? Baxter didn't qualify. Yes. Sparty didn't qualify yet. Yap is still trying to qualify through the globals, and then we're also gonna have like one one uh, challenger only for Europeans, right? Yes. Yes. So um, who is the biggest threat? What do you think? Like, who who has the biggest chance? Baxter has this experience, and he always manages to do it. So he's uh, very scary. Uh, we can't forget about Proximo, who got uh, last uh, late last time, and he actually uh, managed to beat me last challengers and very close That's matches. Right. But he but he's still very dangerous. Oh, and there is also like uh, Face, right? And there's Face who who got to the I finals uh, lately forgot, okay. yeah. uh, and lost to Garpy. So I think uh, right now. After CNZ got qualified, which was pretty obvious to guess that he's gonna qualify because like he's supposed to be in QPL anyways because he's like very good player, but he just managed to to get uh, get get out from the QPL. Uh, I think Baxter is like uh, threat number one, and he he have like biggest chances to to get there. And then there's uh, I think Yup and uh, and uh, Face that are very close, but I think I can I can beat them all. I think I can do it. That's great. So remember, guys, um, this Saturday there is. I will try to make the the, the, the podcast actually out before this, like uh, challengers. So, like this week, QPL pros don't play. Like this is this is worth to mention every time I speak to the camera because people keep forgetting like which week is what. Like you know, mm-hmm. if we're still having like QPL two times in a row. You have QPL pros, then you have one one week challengers. So make sure to watch it. Probably Wenger gonna cast it again because I see him mm-hmm. casting from the very beginning. He did it with Zenaku, I think twice already, or at least one time he he casted it with with Zenaku. I'm really interesting how Sparty gonna go because like uh, I, I I think he like the game was kind of irritating him a little bit, uh, but but he's still practicing a lot and he he keeps up his shape. So I'm really interesting how he gonna do this time. And and as you said, it's kind of difficult because you need to play on high pings. And and if you are not used to it, it's like super different. Like yeah. you need to practice that. And especially sometimes when I watch Yop games, he's like likes to play aggressive and then like he's used to this ping. So he's obviously Yes. It's his he's background. Hit, he's hitting a lot on this ping and it's it's like it's amazing. I cannot hit like literally anything on such ping. Yes. So it's good. Can you mention uh, like your uh, YouTube uh, channel name for the people uh, so we make sure that you guys are gonna visit and leave them a subscription and and maybe maybe some comment for the bigger bigger reach because this is what uh, Tilt Gaming that's what it is Tilt Gaming. Tilt Gaming that's how we call our okay. organization that's how we work in all right so, yeah. uh, what are your hobbies outside the the Quake and esport industry so. Uh, I do like to play squash. I I go squash. I go to the Polish Tatras a few times a year. I like to I like to get to the hills and I didn't went to Rysy yet, but that's my yeah. one of the goals. I want to hit them right. right now. I uh, maybe this summer. Yeah, last season I I uh, did uh, did uh, achieve Zavrat, which is like twenty two hundred, which I was like very happy about it. Because uh, like I'm not like a very fit guy, but I can I have some nice endurance. I can just you know walk for eight yeah. hours and I'm gonna get there. Like th- this is also like some mental uh, mental thing about mountains. But you have to be very careful around mountains. But I really like it. Yeah. Um, so one of those things. I, I started to love it as well. Like I remember when I was a kid, I hate the mountains. I hate going there because like you know it's a lot of walking. It's super boring when you are young because you are just you know there's only nature. 
and you find it not interesting you want to go do something on pc or with your friends and stuff like this but nowadays i just love it i love walking in yeah. the mountains and I, I love achieving like some tops and stuff like this so it's super great especially for the guy like me who spends most of his time in front of the pc so when you can go to the nature and spend whole three days in zakopane and yeah. and mostly walk and, and see those beautiful uh, nature then yeah that's that's amazing to just it's know, very healthy for your head as well right because uh, like you, you have a lot of time free time so you, you have time to clear your head like make some plans and stuff like this yeah and in quake anyway in quake yeah. head is important it's like it's like in boxing you have to have yeah, a... i think mentality is super important in quake it's like sometimes it's like as you said like you were trying to qualify for iron Rod fist you had a right menta- you had a right mentality to do, do your best you cannot put pressure on yourself that you need to qualify somewhere or you need to win someone you know this is the best because like if you put pressure on yourself it's gonna be super bad yeah, at the end there's one story i i wanted to share but uh, because i know we are uh, going go ahead, off go ahead. But, that, yeah. but, that's, but that's funny as hell when i went to the iron fist i didn't even have all the champions i didn't have slash unlock you didn't play you didn't i didn't play, even yeah. have this red, red crystals yet to unlock everything and since i didn't know quake 4 i didn't uh slide I didn't slide really well. And when I was playing in Garpy in loser brackets, he banned Slash on Ruins and like whole Polish community that that knew I don't even have her, they were like they laughing laughed. their ass. They laughed. I was like so funny. Yeah. I was like, dude, I don't even have her. Like, do come on. But yeah, that was like So Gareth, you didn't you didn't do your research. <laughs> and how that game yes. went? Like did you made it close or? No, 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 no. No, he wrecked me there. Like I, I was playing really yeah. bad there. Well, let's be honest, you didn't want to hurt him because he was one of the of the people who like organizing the event but you wouldn't get invited if you wrecked him yes yeah but i knew garpy very well from craig life because i was able to beat him a lot of times online he, he actually didn't really like me there online because i had this weird annoying style but but at the event yeah. we finally met and we, we had some time to talk and laugh about it but good quake life times like all right that's super good and super interesting to speak with you unless you want to say something else and we forgot maybe something but i think i went through the all the topics yeah. that was really interesting in i like think i so. really wanted to touch your like youtube channel what you are doing and, and how you're doing in esport so any shout outs or anything like that in the end um shout out, shout out to ice cold water which uh, thanks to him i'm at quake champions and i experienced all of these amazing things that this one viewer that just told me dude play quake champions shout out to shoot to kill the most remembered clan in poland that's not gonna die ever and they're just, just cool guys and to everyone of course my girlfriend family and everyone and and to you because you're doing a really great job with endpoint and i really like the idea of podcast and representing players who are uh, not very known that much from the this whole the, the main light of quake scene and i think that's what we need the representing of players as personas and not only uh, these nicknames, just doing something online. So that's really of cool. Of course, we need to focus on that because it's like in the end, it's one v one game, and people just want to see like more of the players and get to know more. You know, also I was speaking about it earlier with someone. What would be super great for QPL, let's say, or even like for Polish Quake League or like <coughs> any league, any like uh, you know event, would be super good to to send not even sending the crew with camera but renting some like crew like with the camera like in the place where the certain player lives and just show people like his daily life you know how he great idea how he like copes with the with the, with the day life you know it doesn't need to be super pro or anything like that just just lay, like two guys with the camera and like you know with some skills and like show it to the world or something like that that yeah. would be super good that what was uh, happening in counter strike like there was like yeah. these famous yeah. movies about pasha biceps and uh, yep. tas like that's amazing you can see this person and i would love to see for example nosfa video that I know that yeah. Nosfa works also. So it's like, where is he working? Like how yeah. his life is going, how he can yep. compete on such level living yeah. in Brazil. Like, come on, show us to us like 10 minutes exactly. video, not, exactly. not money. It will be super cool. Yeah. I, I, yeah maybe we're gonna, maybe we're gonna do it at some point on our own or something like that. Anyway, cool. shout out to everyone who's watching this. Make sure to follow, um, Wolf on all of his, um, social media, um, uh, channels and follow his YouTube and follow us as well and i hope we're gonna try to bring you some also more like interesting content in the future and that's it and thank you thank you bye bye